just a podcast. Hey everybody, welcome back to Stick Your Wee in What? On this week... <laughs> <laughs> this, oh. this week, we're trying to figure out, will a wee fit inside a wee fit balance board? Mm. <laughs> How long did it take you to come with that one? <laughs> Literally just now, dude. It just <laughs> blew right out. All right, guys. Welcome back to Just a Podcast, episode six. It's been a while. It's, it's been, been probably long, six to seven minutes. And I'm really excited to be back, as mm. always. As I say every time we take a break and then we come back and I say I'm really excited to be back. This time I mean it. I meant it last time, too, but this time I really mean it. Yeah. And the podcasting game, being gone this long is a, is a big deal. The podcast the most popular thing on, on Just You Guys. It's, it's, it's a bit unfortunate, but but you might be happy to know that's what we're sticking to. We're going to give ourselves a light workload because we're not stupid this time around. Yeah, yeah. We're graduating seniors, both working on theses. Um, so here comes a podcast. Well, I'm working on theses. You're working on feces. <laughs> <laughs> is that going in the thesis? <laughs> yeah. At the very bottom. Like it's a footnote. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, uh, so yeah, we're we're but but we're 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 back in the game, um, and we're really rolling with it. I hope you guys enjoyed our lost episode yesterday, which was the inception yesterday last week, yeah. which was the inception of our podcasting game. Yeah, it was recorded like three years ago. I might have yeah. I might include a little. Brief. Oh, I was going to include a little brief thing. Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, okay. Then, I guess we both will. Well, in that case, the, yeah. So the, you know, it was, <laughs> then you guys know it was a really old episode that was recorded the first time I ever came up with the idea to do a podcast. Joshua was pretty excited about it, and then I never edited it because yeah. I'm, a, I'm just a pile of dookie. Yep. So now it's put together and it's online. So yep. So, so here we are recording episode six of Just a Podcast for the third time, actually. Yeah. So... Uh, but this one's going to be the one that actually hits the internet. Um, as always, we've got ourselves our uh, articles, weird news articles. Uh, we gave ourselves the the code words. And Trey, what was your code word? All right. So uh, my code word, make sure Joshua did not know, uh, not have the same article as me, was uh, Woodbridge, Virginia. <laughs> oh, okay. Not, yeah, quite, mine, not quite a code word. And mine was just feet. Just feet. And I think we've, I think there's probably no way we've got the same one. Yeah. So, Trey, why don't you go ahead and go first? Okay, mine's really short this time, you guys, but bear with me, because when you hear this title, you're going to understand why I had to pick it regardless. Mom-daughter duo fight off carjackers in Woodbridge with hot cocoa. Bag. (laughs) You know what? You won't believe this, but I saw that. No way! I saw that and almost used it because of the hot dog, or hot dog, hot chocolate, comma, bag. Bag. (laughs) (laughs) This is from the Associated Press, uh, January 16th. Uh, Woodbridge, Virginia. Police in Price William County, Virginia, said two would-be carjackers fled from their intended victims when a splash of hot cocoa and a dash of resourcefulness entered the mix over the weekend. This guy thinks he's clever. But yeah, just he write really the news. does. Just right. The you know we talked about this before in this segment, but you know when you get a story like this and you're just like, it's my time to show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. My whole career has been lining up for this moment. <laughs> just like fiery fingers on the keyboard, just like injured the mix. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Editors are like, I don't think you should use that pun. Fuck you. <laughs> it's not really professional. I'll do what I want, Beatrice. <laughs> Have you guys had a Greg today? He seems a little He seems a little angry. Yeah, you know, I think he's really boiling over. <laughs> Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Around 11.58 p.m. Saturday, police said in a statement that 50-year-old woman that a 50-year-old woman, exited a 7-Eleven at 15052 Cardinal Drive in Woodbridge, Virginia. You guys going to ro- go want to go rob the yeah, 7-Eleven. Yeah, yeah. There's the address. With some purchased items, when two men, one with a handgun, approached and demanded her vehicle. The woman struck one man with her bag, police said, before her 22-year-old daughter threw her hot chocolate towards both men, who then fled on foot. No one was injured, and no property was taken. Could you imagine being so cool that you could go home? She's she's 22. She's presumably in college or working. Yeah, yeah. She walks back and she saunters back over to her group of friends. She's like, what did you guys do yesterday? Me? Well, thanks for asking. I I fought off two dangerous armed criminals with a cup of hot chocolate and a purse. But, you know, no big deal. (laughs) (laughs) I can't even think of a joke. I'm laughing too hard about that. That's really good. No. Well... You know, the weird thing is, is the bag feels like it was more important. But the hot cocoa was... But the was, hot cocoa was, yeah. It was just a little marshmallow on top. <laughs> yeah. 
That's a pretty good story, though. This way, it's, it's short and sweet. I wish like a small glass of hot cocoa. <laughs> I get <laughs> I get messed up by these um by these stories that are so short but are so impactful on people's lives. I opened up a Wikipedia article one day and just like just just hit random Wikipedia article and it came up with this riot that took place in the seventies in yeah. Chicago. Apparently, because nineteen seventy Chicago riot. <laughs> <laughs> to some extent i guess but it was about a guy who um like caught a black woman stealing from his store and when he claimed that she stole from the store he was right um but apparently according to some sources was overly violent with her trying to get this liquor bottle from under her shirt that she had hidden when she was walking out right and so people protested this sort of like racial violence and it degraded into people breaking the window and stealing all the liquor in the liquor store so literally, the guy stopped someone from stealing from him, and in response, the town said, "Oh yeah, we're gonna steal from you." <laughs> yeah, that's weird. And cause you bodily harm, and yeah, it was terrible. Like, you know what I have to say about that? And it's really affected someone's entire life. And it's like a, a four paragraph page on Wikipedia. You know what I have to say about that? What? Liquor. I barely know her. <laughs> Read your article. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> So mine, uh, mine was originally a little bit more informative than uh, less. I'm sorry. Mine was originally a more informative article, um, but I don't, we don't need to know the reason for it. It's just a fun little thing. Um, this is something I've seen a lot in the past. I've actually like speaking of Wikipedia articles, I've gone on like researching tangents about this, and it's just recently starting to happen again. Um, so here we go. Severed feet still inside shoes keep mysteriously washing up on the Pacific Northwest shores. Oh my god, what? Oh my god. You, you've never heard of this? No, that's yeah, terrifying. Yeah, it's an epidemic, dude. It's all, all up on the, the coast of Vancouver and the you know upper part of... Uh, well, we'll read. We'll see how much detail. I actually haven't read this article. I just switched from a different one. Um, they appear on sand like any piece of debris. Sometimes they're found amid the candy wrappers and cracked shells by volunteering volunteers cleaning up the mess. Other times a vacationer might glimpse a grisly discard from the corner of her eye. A serene walk along the beach interrupted just like that. Oh, they're taking some, like, weird fictional Creative, liberties, yeah. yeah. As more people learned about these discoveries, they attracted morbid scavengers to the Pacific Northwest shorelines where the Solish, Solish Sea connects underwater connects waterways along the west coast of the United States and Canada. What these scavengers sought remains a prickly curiosity. Severed feet attached to running shoes washed up, on the, uh, washed up from origins unknown. Sixteen of these detached human feet have been found since 2007 in British Columbia, Canada, and Washington State. Most of these have been right feet. All of them have been uh, wearing running shoes or hiking boots. Among them, three New Balances, two Nikes, and an Ozark Trail. The most recent one turned up earlier this week. Charlotte Stevens of British Columbia was taking a walk with her family on the Vancouver Island when her husband spotted something in the sand. It was a shoe, which they could see right away, but a closer inspection revealed something more. He picked it up and brought it out onto the beach, uh, she told CBC, and we had a look at it for about five minutes, and we thought, it almost looked like there's an actual foot bone in it. And sure enough, the coroner's service confirmed that the shoe came with a dismembered foot. There's no uh, telling for exactly how long the foot was in the water, uh, but the coroner said that the exact model of the shoe had gone on the market after 2013, indicating that it once, uh, that it once belonged to someone who went missing between then and this December. Brown is working with the police to link the foot to individuals who disappeared from the area around that time. Venery history is, if history is any indication, however, the identity associated with the foot will stay adrift. That was another one of those moments yeah, where they yeah, just, yeah, yeah. like, oh yeah, I got that one. Um, it kind of goes on. Christ. It, it kind of recounts a few of the other times that it's happened. Um, basically, the basic rundown, the article doesn't cover this, but the basic rundown is, um, it just has something to do with currents. And people, when you go, when you, when you drown, like you sink really, really quickly, like to the point where like, if you're looking for a drowning victim, like within minutes after drowning, they just say, look at the bottom with well, seconds. Really? They say, just go to the bottom of the water. Like you don't start floating until you decompose. Right. Yeah. So like you're at the bottom of the water and you're getting pulled around by currents and your joints are the weakest part of you. So as they twist around, they'll pull off, you know, shoes and or feet and knees. I don't know why they're all right feet. But, but anyway, people will often like, this, this is kind of the, kind of the speculated answer is that people will just go running or hiking and then fall to their death and then drown. Uh, and 
they're in their feet pulled off and washed no, ashore because uh-uh. of see, currents. See, Josh, you have a too convenient answer for this. I think you're hiding something. Oh. I think you are a serial foot killer from Vancouver. I have a closet full of left shoes. <laughs> I keep losing the right ones. <laughs> I keep dropping them in the water as I'm dismembering them. Shoes. <laughs> I like the idea that it's dead shoes. No people are involved. Yeah. It's just shoes. But <laughs> isn't that really creepy? There's just this like one area where there has been like a bunch of feet just washed up. Yeah. Like it, I guess it just has something to do with the currents. But like, isn't that just really, really weird and creepy, man? You know, it's still messed up. I think there's just we might have talked about this before. There's this location. It's either I might be revealing that I don't know much about this subject. But um, there's That's how I am every time I talk about anything. So yeah. go on. <laughs> it's either in Europe or in Japan. But there's this one location where like birds just die. I'm sure you've heard of what? this. What? No, I haven't. So uh, just like once a year, like at a routine time, birds will fly over the location and fall out of the sky. What? Birds just die. Just die for no reason. That, that no discernible reason. You know what that means? God, a- lives area there. 51 is underneath that. <laughs> Like, yeah, we went went on two different paths with that, and I loved both of them. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I like the idea that God is like smacking birds down so they don't reveal his secret location. <laughs> Get out of here. Go. Shoo. Shoo. <laughs> I can't have you telling the populace where Area Fifty One is. <laughs> God is in charge of Area Fifty One. <laughs> no, he's just in on the conspiracy. <laughs> oh, I see. He got paid off by George Bush. <laughs> I like the idea that George Bush was around in 1953 when it's, Roswell crashed, like during the Roswell crash. But isn't that really weird how they're just like locations, like like there's the Foot Beach and you know Bird Death Island, right? <laughs> yeah. But there's also this place in Canada. Now, granted, this may have just been a passing thing. It may have just happened because of a weird astronomical event. But this is a couple of years ago. I was reading that there's this like place in Canada where it's not really like visibly different, like incredibly noticeably different. Unless you're, like, really sensitive to it. But, like, there's this place in Canada where gravity is less than it is anywhere else. Like, it's just just because of the geography of the area, you, you weigh slightly less in this area. How, how slightly are we talking? Is I, it it's not as, it's, I don't, yeah, I don't think it's, like, a significant difference. Okay. But it is it is significant in science, but not significant to us. Yeah, the right? layman like, would Yeah, I think yeah. It, it may have been, like, half a pound or something like Whoa. that. Whoa. But that is cool, though. Yeah, yeah. And I, I could be getting these things twisted but it's just crazy how we have things like that or things like like you know the bermuda triangle yeah. or things like you know, the the mile long one atom tall thing underneath the pyramids in egypt i like, watched that video today uh, <laughs> really <laughs> yeah, i rewatched that video today go watch spirit science the history of the earth please oh do yeah it. do it it's it's a it's a grandiose time um no i don't actually believe that but no, area 51 not. and the bermuda triangle those are all real. <laughs> Bigfoot lives there. The that's, that's the, the Bermuda stretch. Triangle is Bigfoot's hot tub. Whoa, wait! Bigfoot has been seen really often in the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> Bigfoot has been often seen wearing one Ozark on his left. Yeah, leg. <laughs> I was gonna say. Do you think Bigfoot's <laughs> responsible for these shoes? How big are those shoes? <laughs> <Does> Bigfoot <laughs> needs shoes, and he can't go out and purchase them because it's a Sasquatch. Oh yeah, yeah, because yeah, he he's really, and it's not because he doesn't want to be found. He's just really self conscious. They're all right shoes <laughs> because he like walks with a slight limp, which makes his left shoe wear out faster. <laughs> That's really sad. <laughs> so he throws the right shoe away and he keeps the left one. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I love Bigfoot. He's a great guy. You think we could have him as a guest? <laughs> yeah, he's in fact he's here right now. Hey, real good to see you, Bigfoot. How you been doing? Oh, I forgot. How are the kids? Yeah. Crazy, man. All right, cool. <laughs> well, we'll see. I mean, yeah, we don't want to take up too much of your time. We just really thank you for being on the show in general. What are you doing with that shoe? Okay. <laughs> oh, I, I'll buy, I guess. <laughs> All right, well, hope you guys enjoyed the first guest on Just You Guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we just the, go ahead? The, this week on Top 5 Stupidest Things that We've Ever Done. <laughs> this week? <laughs> Top, top five stupidest things we did this week. I like that. That's a really good idea. That'd be a really good. Uh, that'd be a really good tagline for just about every episode of Just You Guys. We put, <laughs> put up five episodes a week, and each one of them get in the top five stupidest things we've done that week. 
<laughs> oh my god, that's really good. Well, all right, all right, all right. So we, we gotta get our to sponsors in. Yeah, we gotta. Okay, we're gonna take a small commercial break. Uh, message from our sponsors, and we'll see you back on our uh, on our free talk. Next Saturday, tune in as our hard-hitting investigative team tries to find the secret behind the lost shoes of Vancouver. Featuring never-before-seen footage and exclusive interviews. I just, like, never thought I'd be walking on the beach and find a shoe. Hear the victims tell their own tales. I was just walking my dog on the beach and he found a shoe and I was like, what's that? He's like, bark! And an exclusive interview with the Sasquatch, the sole suspect for the crime. Over here, over here. I was just walking around and I found a shoe with a foot in it. I, I didn't think anything about it. This type of thing happens a lot in the Sasquatch community, so I just took one. About a week later, I found a second one, so I took that one too. Excuse me, sir. Are you denying your involvement in the case? Tune in to find the answer. <laughs> no, no, I'm definitely responsible. Tune in 8 p.m. National Geographic on February 17th. Just the podcast. What? I don't know, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, I'm actually, like, impacted, I feel. That's weird. Yeah, I know. I feel, <laughs> I feel violated because I don't... Like, usually whenever you feel from a song... You know. You, you know it. Yeah. But, like, that one doesn't feel like I should be feeling. Yeah. So I feel genuinely violated. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> Well, I guess we, let's just get into free discussion and whatever you yeah. want to talk about. So, guys, before you listen to this segment of the show, we're going to spend just a minute here talking about the new Bill Wirtz song, uh, uh, Lottie Dottie, Lottie Dottie Day, Day uh, whatever. Yeah. So, go listen to that, um, because that's what we're going to be referencing for this first part here. <laughs> so, oh, okay. <laughs> so, so just go listen to that if you want some context, or you don't have to. Yeah, um, you might It'll just probably be a little spin bit off really fast. Yeah, you, yeah, you might might be a little left out, but so so we just got finished listening to it because we were talking about Ben Folds during the intermission, and uh, somehow we went on to that. It was just a anyway. Uh, he kind of sounds like Ben Folds. He kind of does yeah. a little bit. Yeah. So so first off, I want to say. I've been a fan of Bill Wirtz for quite a while. I love Bill yeah, Wirtz. Um, I've shown you a few videos here and there, and you've seemed passively interested. Oh, I'm super interested. I just always forget what his name is, and uh, then I just, I'm like, oh, it's that stick figure guy with the history thing. Yeah, yeah, that's him. <laughs> you know, it's really funny. He won a Shorty Award for YouTuber of the Year, and whenever he went up to go get his, uh, I can't remember. This was either last year or the year before, but uh, whenever he went up to go get the award, instead of giving his speech, he was just like, "Thank you," and he just walked away. <laughs> yeah whoa what but, a weird dude yeah i think he's like he's, he's genuinely super weird um but i really really love his stuff a huge fan of his stuff yeah and his new song we just listened to and try tell me tell me what you thought about it so what's weird about it is that it mostly sounds like gibberish um at the beginning it opens with this like thing about wanting to I mean, perhaps it's about him the but the thing is about wanting to actually express one's feelings despite the fact that you know maybe it's a little weird uh, there's alliances uh uh two plus two has been four for so many darn years yeah <laughs> which is like a really great line he's just trying to sort of change things up and he says i want to write a song which seems to be self-referential but then throughout the song there are these references to some person who is not there so he'll be like you know but you're not here or when will you come home or whatever but like th- th- other than that this person's like really not mentioned in the song at all and the song mostly seems to be about like expressing one's feelings, and then, or or even just j- complete gibberish, like I'm yeah. too small to go to the mall, like yeah, doesn't make yeah. any sense. And you get these things in here that's uh, yeah, that's my favorite line. Um, you get this th- these things in here where he says, let's see, where is it? He says, um, then I built some trains and I'm traveling somewhere new. It's a wonderful world, but still no you. It's a wonderful world for two. And this is like, you know, this this dude's like really silly looking. The video is really vibrant and bright. Like, I think just before this line, you get a panda blinking across the screen doing a flip. Yeah. Right? Like, so it's a really, this really weird juxtaposition between like genuine feeling and like, am I supposed to be feeling? <laughs> like, yeah. I'm a huge fan of things that have like, that are really comedic except for one moment. I don't know if you know oh, this yeah, about yeah, me, yeah. but like, that's my favorite. That's not really a genre. But that's my favorite genre. <laughs> like, like, or, or things that are aggressively depressing with an upbeat tone or an upbeat tempo. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, um, that's why you you like you like make happy by um, Bo Burnham a lot. a lot more than I do. Yeah, I thought I thought it was I thought it was all right, but you were you really resonated with it. Uh, well, it's because I find it to be really true, especially all the stuff about being an artist. Not to be like that guy, oh, I'm an artist, but like yeah, he, I, he did a hair flip when he said that. Yeah, I'm but an like artist. I do write poetry, I do write songs. I you know I'm in, Joshua and I are on a committee for a literary journal, but it, yeah. but it's like there's this feeling of like wasting your time when somebody reads it or wasting their time more importantly. Yeah. Yeah. That I really like that really resonates with me. I don't know what it is like, you know? Um, but to be fair, I don't often express myself explicitly in poetry or in storylines or anything like that. I think yeah. Me neither. That. I, I often, there are a few times when I, when I do express myself in, in poetry, yeah. Or or in any of these kinds of things, um, you get this really weird feeling of being vulnerable. Um, you get this really weird thing. At least I do. I guess I'm yeah. saying you, but I get this really weird thing of being vulnerable. Like I recently wrote this poem that was submitted, but it didn't get accepted. Um, it just needs some work, I think. But um, did it get accepted? Snow? No. Weird. I really yeah. thought it got accepted. Nah. Um, everything else it. I submitted did, but Snow didn't. Yeah. It, it lost by like one vote. Damn. Um, but anyway, and in the middle of this poem, like, this is the first time you're hearing of this, but in the middle of this poem, like, I, I name, like, a bunch of pronouns, right? Like, I'm just like, you know, there's, like, a trail of footsteps, and I'm saying the footsteps belong to these, and it's like, he, her, them, she, we, us, they, them, right? And, like, those pronouns are, like, each one of them has a specific person in mind when I wrote it, right? But whenever anyone asked me about it, I was just like, mm, no, nah, they're just, it's just gibberish. Because like, Why? because I feel very vulnerable with that kind of stuff. Well, I've gotten over it by now because there's no reason to. Well, feel if you would that, like guess, to explicate but... a little more to me, I I gathered that they were specific people to the speaker. I didn't gather they were specific people to you. Well, yeah, yeah. It's but because of the whole concept of the poem. But that's this is an aside that is yeah, a, yeah, the yeah, more personal yeah, side. Sorry. But anyway, um, so so that's just an that's just an anecdote though. It's like whenever you write this kind of stuff. And you get really serious about it. You start to feel really, or like I said, you generally, but I start yeah. to feel really vulnerable. And so whenever you, whenever you're doing stuff like that, I usually try to write through like a like a persona, yeah, or for sure. or, or something like that. Yeah. Um, and I don't know that the song, the the la di da, seems like it's breaking that in the best way he knows how yeah you know? which is this, it's, it's this facade of a persona that every once in a while he comes out in the middle of right right yeah and it's i think it's a really really nice i bet he's just like he's just sitting there like no i, I was just, randomly generated yeah yeah <laughs> i just clicked the word generate until i found something that rhymed yeah which i i would be shocked to hear though because it seems so it just feels so particular. genuine and so like there, I guess the feelings that are expressed. I guess it's kind of like a horoscope, but the feelings that are expressed are, I suppose, real feelings and universal feelings. Yeah, like universal. where are you? you right, know? right. Like everyone has that a that person. Anastasia, the person who's gone missing that they loved. You know? Yeah, yeah. And it's just like now, whether it's a loved one, whether it's the one that got away, whether every time you listen to that song you think of a different person there, it's a very universal feeling for sure. So maybe that's what it's playing to, and maybe it does mean nothing real, and they're just doing the same thing, or he's just doing the same thing pop songs do, where they say, like, you, you're the one that got away. That was a yeah. Katy Perry song. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, so perhaps that's the case. But I think, I don't know, I think if you listen to a lot of other Bill Ward stuff, too, he does a lot, he does, that one's probably more personal. Yeah, but he does a lot of that kind of stuff in his songs, where it's like you get this like one or two lines where it's like, wow, that was like, that was something that was really real. Like he has this one song near the end, or lo- one line near the end of La Di Da, where he says, "When did the windmills start to turn so slow?" Yeah, and it's like I don't even necessarily know what that means, but it sounds really deep. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you get that feeling out of it. Yeah, the, I, I, I'm. See, you were talking about feeling like exposed with doing personal stuff for me. What it is is I don't feel like I can do the event justice, and I'm so oh, yeah, afraid yeah. of like this sort of like generic like I'm sad because of my family. Because yeah, of, you well, know, when whatever. my mom died, I have I have this like rough draft of a poem that I have like written down in my my black book. Yeah, this little black book that I carry around with me, and every time I look at that, I like sh- sigh and shake my head because I'm just like, oh, I I really can't 
describe yeah that emotion like uh what what was it who said it um shoot it's it, well it's kind of like uh it's kind of like Shelley's idea of of the sublime we're not being able to yeah no, you 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 are unable as a human being to accurately express uh, real emotion as nature does, you know. Yeah. So the, you're saying your your natural feeling of it is the closest that you can ever get to expression. Right. Right. And you can't. You can never like. Yeah. You, you can try to approximate it, but you'll never reach it. Right. Right. And that's kind of what it feels like. Mm-hmm. And whenever he, whenever Senor Wirtz does his little little things, I don't know. It just feels like it's a really, really real thing because Do you, think- you know you're going through your day, yeah. right? And you're having a good day. You're you're jovial, joking around with your buddy, and then you stop and you remember this yeah. moment, yeah. you know. And then that's the where did all the good times go, you know? Yeah. And then you go back into la di da di da, you know, because you can't dwell on it. Yeah. Uh, Do you think that when he wrote that, he ever thought somebody would bring up Percy Shelley and the Sublime? <laughs> yeah, compare like this? <laughs> Yeah. No, uh, the Sublime is it, it's more of it's not necessarily the Sublime, more of just the way he talked about. The yeah, sublime, yeah I, but, I'm with you. Yeah. So, but see, that's what's like. I, I know exactly how you feel, though, and it, and also for me, it, it comes through aging. I don't know if you've got this. Like, I'm not saying that we're old. We're not. We're really young. Oh, for sure. But what I'm trying to say I is, still like, suck on a pacifier. Well, you drink know. milk formula because my mom doesn't have boob milk anymore. La di da di da di da di da. Um. So. <laughs> Um, but like, I know exactly people because like, I'll just think sometimes like, you know, man, you know, wasn't it cool when I never knew that there were like any problems and what really has gotten to me is like, Oh, when like, when your parents were the most perfect people in the world and and nothing that was ever wrong. And then, and then like you go outside and all the outside is, is a place where you can play and there's no wolves or bears that you have to watch out for. Yeah. I mean, I never encountered a bear. (laughs) We live in the wilderness, (laughs) but like, it's like. I don't know. It's like there was – there's. Just, you look back and there was a time where your understanding of everything was predicated on this like concept of playing and not on understanding. So there's, over this, there's a difference between experiencing and knowing and I think that's also the break that yeah. you're talking about. Like you can experience something but not know anything about it. So, know, so wanting that experience but knowing that if I know – was actually in the in the background, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I don't know. It's I mean, I'm not trying to. Uh, by the way, nothing terrible like happened in my life overall. I'm just saying, like, if you go back and you look back at your childhood, sometimes you realize that like stuff was going on. Like I have, well, you know, family members that 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 like killed themselves. Well, you know, looking back on it, it's like, wow, you know what? Every time I spoke to him, he never really seemed happy, did he? And you never, you don't catch on to that at first, especially people you don't see very often, like, you know, separated, like, extended family. Yeah, and in that same vein, I just recently went up to my childhood uh, homestead. <laughs> found the ant place. Yeah, I found the ant farm. Um, for anyone who doesn't, ant farm? Ant battleground is a better word. <laughs> Um, for anyone who doesn't understand that, I'll find the link episode. to it. I'll find the link to it. Just look in the show notes for the word giant ant in a link and you'll, you'll find it. Yeah. Stick around for a little while. You'll catch on. Yeah. So, um, TLDR, I fought a giant ant. Uh, it's a conspiracy. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I recently went back up there and at this point in time, that house is abandoned. It's an abandoned house. It's still got all of our old stuff in it, which is so weird. Like, well, it's, can you take it back? Well, I mean, it's it's stuff that like there's really there's no place for it and there's no use for it anymore. Like we've kind of we've taken everything out of it that we need, right? It's just kind of like oh, here's some books from like 1920 that has nothing to do with anything anymore. Oh, please keep those. Well, I mean, if we can, but there's it's a it's a matter of space. It's a huge house, lots of stuff, right? It's just there's no space for it. So anyway. Not that we intend to throw it all away, but it's just a kind of like a matter. So is is it abandoned? In what in what sense? No like, one lives there. Everyone no one who lives it. Or? Everyone. Well, uh, my dad owns it, I think. But there's it's gonna be out of the family in not too long. There's, we just can't pay, keep paying for it, with no one living there. Wait, right, how much can I pay, pay for it? We'll have to go this later. But anyway, we went up to I went up to this house. Everyone who used to live here dead, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, dead or moved out. So like it, it, memories down every hall, every doorway, every everything, uh, the backyard. And this was really what hit me is when I was younger, 
we used to play in that backyard and we did these like fantasy things. So it was, uh, it was this like huge battleground or it was this tavern or it was a cave where we battled dragons or it was anything we needed it to be. And it felt that big. And then when my grandmother passed, we didn't go up there for about two or three years um, because our grandmother was always the one who came down and grabbed us. Uh, we still had people living up there, but it was just now at this point, we just couldn't get up there um, as easily. As easily, right. So um, I went there about two or three years later. And at this point, I'd grown up enough where I was self-aware. So now whenever I played, whenever I pulled out my wooden sword to play swords with my neighbor, we both felt really silly and we no longer felt it. We, we, we stopped feeling fun because we got really self-conscious and self-aware that this is a kid's thing to do. And we don't have the imagination in us anymore. And we're not that we were like too old for it, but like we just didn't have it in us anymore. Yeah. We had grown out of it. Right. Yeah. And, and I walked through that yard and that yard is just like so small now. It's like two of me laying end to end. Um, wow. and, and I went up there this weekend and I legitimately had that when did the windmill start to turn so slow moment yeah. where it was like, wow, when did everything get this small? When did everything get this like empty, you yeah. know? And it's like this really, really weird moment in life. And I think that's something that people can just feel, you know, like, like I said earlier, you may not know what the, like, when did the windmill start to turn so slow, but you feel this idea of loss of missing something whenever you hear that, you know, because yeah. even if you don't really know what he means by it or understand what he's trying to say, if he's even trying to say anything, I want to keep that on the table here. Um, you, you feel this, you feel this loss and you, you no longer, you know, you know that there's an emptiness or, or a lack of vibrancy in it yeah. you know yeah so when i was younger um only fun story i have is about wrestling in the backyard um <laughs> but then i went back to georgia where i used to live relatively you know we used to do it like every other year and there was just a year and, and every time we did it including until i was like 16 we were just like man who cares about how dumb we'll look we'll just we're gonna wrestle in the backyard because we have fun and then there just came a point where everybody was like yeah, let's not do that. Yeah, let's just lean let's against the that. wall and talk. Yeah. And it's so weird to me because in my heart, I had a dream about this the other day. I just, I, my, in my full dream was being a child and like German suplexing my little brother on a trampoline. That was the entire dream. And I just woke up like really like, I don't know, torn up about it. I have a lot of dreams that make me sad. It's only recently has, has, has this occurred to me as i tell people about dreams that every single dream i have is like a, a message to me for some reason even though i don't believe in that and it's a really silly thing to think i think if you think about wait a minute if you believe that your dreams are messages you're probably wrong I'm not trying to be that guy but for some reason i have dreams that are evocative to me when i wake up and try to interpret them or try yeah to think that's about them. that's how i feel dreams there there are certain types of dreams or a certain category of dreams that really, really, truly, I think they actually like they they really they can they have the capacity to change your cognition because it puts an idea into your yeah. head that you never had. Yes. When I was in fifth grade, there was this girl named Juliet that I just you know she just kind of you know it didn't really mean anything to me, and then I had a dream that she and I went out on a date, and then I was fixated on her for the rest of the year. I could not forget her. Yeah. Right. Like it was ridiculous. And it wasn't that I like suddenly decided she was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. I just had a dream and it put that idea in my head. And whether I liked it or not, all I wanted to do was be with her because of that dream. Yeah. And I think it really puts these ideas in your head. And sometimes you battle with that or sometimes you, you know, you don't really know what to feel about that. It's kind of the same thing Trey and I were talking about with this song where it's like you feel, but listening to the song, you don't feel like you should be feeling so yeah. instead, you feel as if you were, what we, what was the word we used? It felt invasive. Is that the word we used? Yeah, like, like yeah, invasive or elusive. Like he just was, like there was a message here that would pop in and then go away very quickly. Yeah. And you're like, well, maybe that wasn't intentional. But then you hear it like three more times. Like well, that's got to be something. Yeah. And so, yeah. yeah, it's it's a really it's a really weird moment in in 
in your life whenever you get changed by a dream and you can't really explain it. Yeah, this happened. This happened to me a couple times. Yeah. yeah. Have I ever told on air the story about my my dream where I lived my entire life? I don't think so. It's a good. <laughs> Have one, I ever man. told you? Yeah, yeah I you told, told me. you. Um, basically, when I was like twelve. I had a dream that I went up to a girl in the cafeteria and we like spoke to each other and then we started getting along really well. It's a girl that I invented, completely invented, some brunette and um we like you know we're out we're doing stuff it's like a it's almost like a television like montage it's like a musical montage but without music um whatever that is called i think it's just called a montage yeah that's so, be my bet. <laughs> so it's going through like our lives or whatever there's like a point where like we're on a playground i like help her up a thing there's a point where we're like talking um, there's a point where we're like having dinner, a point where we're driving somewhere. And in most of my dreams, I can't drive. Like even to this day, I don't know what it is. Really? But in that dream, I could I could drive well. And so we went some, we were, you know, and we're like changing, we're aging. And like we have a child who's like four years old. And the dream, I go to sleep with her in the bed and the kid in the bed like like away from her. So like it's it's me and her and then the child in the bed. And then I woke up and I literally cried for like 10 minutes because she wasn't there. And I have no idea what was up. Like, I cannot figure out, like, I, I don't believe that there was anything going on exactly. Maybe I was just a really lonely kid, which makes some sense because I kind of was. But, like, just looking at, like, I just had this moment where I woke up and I thought, well, what happened to my life? And it was very specific. It wasn't like. Where is that girl whose name I don't know? It was like, where I don't remember her name. I was like, where is Alyssa? Like, to that specific of a degree, like, where is she? Sit up, look around, and then, like, look down at myself and realize I'm not an adult and then just lose it. Like, I was flipping out. Like, I couldn't figure out what had happened. I never mentioned it to, like, anybody until, I, like, until, like years later. And now he's mentioning it to literally possibly anybody. <laughs> Including Alyssa. If someone else had this dream except about a man... You know I'm I I'm I'm just gonna leave Morgan. <laughs> That's not true. But <laughs> Morgan, if you're hearing this, it's a thin line. Girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You better start dreaming. <laughs> but yeah, it was really weird. Um, yeah. But then again, you know what I think? I think it did affect the way I act and the way I think about things, because later on I had the experience of the when I met my fiance for the first time. We were both quite young, and. Joshua laughs because she's three years younger than I am. Oh, you can cut that out. I didn't mean to laugh. <laughs> You're fine. Um, and I, <laughs> like, she's, we're messing around at, like, a park or something, just walking around being a bunch of weird kids, and she needs help getting up something at the park. And it didn't even occur to me until way later. That's, like, exactly what happened in a dream? Maybe? I don't know. Maybe my brain's planting things now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I really don't know. If there's one thing I've learned... Is that your brain can't be trusted. I mean, what can? Yeah. You can't trust your brain. What can? You know, that's what's crazy to me, though, about everything. Is like, everything is filtered through this completely broken Yeah, yeah, like, system. all your memories are, are, are messed up. Like, how many times do you remember locking your door? When you didn't. When you didn't. Yeah. yeah. Or, 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 you know, turning off the stove. Well, did I turn off the stove? And you could remember both. Like, think right now, Trey. Yeah. Whenever you, like last cooked right do you remember turning off the stove but i bet you could remember turning it i bet you can remember just walking out and leaving it on too you know yeah i mean like you can you can mess with your own memories <laughs> i'm sitting there like wait is the stove on <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's i've just been trying to tell you this whole time that you left the stove on for two days yeah it's still on <laughs> you, yeah you just you're just like too passive aggressive to turn it <laughs> off yourself but yeah so like you know, you can mess with your own memories and you have to sit there and try to figure out what's real and what isn't. Yeah. And what's really weird is that you have to depend on someone else to help you out too. Like, oh, did I do this? But they have the same problem you do. Yeah. So the only thing you can do is consult something in the physical world, you know, yeah. which which can also sometimes be faulty depending on how your senses are, you know. Like we're talking about any sort of mental illness or an inability to – or being blind or some weird thing like that, you yeah. know. Yeah. Like you, you, you may think something. You just call blind people inaccurate. weird. Um, I guess so. By extension. <laughs> so this was us, um, uh, picking apart Bill Words' la di da. <laughs> um, so 
Go listen to that song. It's really good. Let us know if you thought that we were way too uh, analytical analytical <laughs> for a song that's probably just a silly little thing. But either way, Bill Wirtz, if you listen to this, uh, oh which I know you won't, but no. I'm going to send it to you anyway. Oh, my, so, please do. Please yeah, I will. Just tweet it out. Just tweet annoying. him out of the timestamp and be like, hey, we talked about your uh, your podcast. Anyway, y- hey, look, if you're listening to this, Bill Wirtz, you're listening to me talk about you listening to it. So you guys didn't see that, but he I just dabbed in a podcast. You're an idiot. <laughs> um, so let us know if you thought we were too analytical, Bill Words. If you're listening, let us know how spot on we were. Um, he won't. He doesn't explain anything. No, he doesn't. Everybody's like, What's no, the actually, you know what, Bill Words? It. Just put like some like, just just say whatever you feel, man. Yeah. You know whether yeah. you can really voice it or not. Just try to say what you feel, because that's yeah. all we can really do. Yeah, I I went on the internet today to express my feelings, and it felt so good. It felt so real. It felt so real. Yeah. So, uh, we'll move on to the next segment. <laughs> Trey, do you think, I have two possible segments. I think one is less interesting than the other, so I'll actually switch. Trey, uh-huh. I have this list of things that I call self-evident, self-evident truths of good, ho- good software. Man, I'm really messing up good my speech. Good software? There. Yeah, self-evident truths of good software. I think you're just a weirdo that likes to prepare for podcasts. Like, No, no, this is something I've been preparing for in my free time, but, but I wanted to know what you thought about it. No, no, no. no. I, oh, I gather. I'm just saying, like, you're one of those characters that people really get, like, big on. They're like, yeah, he's got these weird quirks. Like, he just keeps lists. I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, I've only got four right now. Okay. Because this is something I'm really passionate about. Of good about. software? Of good software. So these are traits... That I think that if your software does not have these traits um, that obviously applicable to it, then I think it is a less good software than an identical one that does have these traits. Uh, like I said, I've only got four. Here we go. First one is uh, messaging clients which offer red receipts and typing notifications. Um, those are vastly superior to ones that don't offer that. Um... What are your thoughts on that? So I'm talking okay. like Android, Android Messages, the standard text messaging app on Android the stock test messaging app on Android is less superior to iMessage because you do not get red. Re- you do not have the option to get red receipts or typing notifications. Okay, I'm not gonna lie to you though. Yeah, red receipts sometimes annoy me because what they. <laughs> this is not about the software. This is about to be about a personal problem. Yeah, but they also like com- they they are complicit in the creation of drum of dramatic situations. For no good reason. No, and that's true enough. <laughs> I mean, the, like, you know, this whole, like, oh, I got left on red kind of situation. Yeah, but you know? it's like, sometimes it says red because I open up the phone and, like, I was in the middle of recording the podcast. So, like, if somebody texts me right now, it's like, boop, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, like, leave, I'll, I'll respond leave. in a second, but I can't respond right this second. So, if you start sending me, like, passive aggressive messages, I'm mad. Now you've just made it. I will, I will leave someone on red for a long time until I respond to them if I've seen it and I'm not ready to respond. Um, but I think more than, more often than not, it's not a big deal. I don't think, unless it's like a really important thing, No, I don't think someone's going back to your message and looking for you to see if you had read it or not. I think people will more often than not, will send the message and then just wait for your reply and won't open it again until they get a reply. Um, yeah, except like, I don't disagree. Yeah. I don't disagree at all. They they are better. It's better to have them. But and I think I, I and just, I think and I think it's the option, which is why I said messaging clients which offer it. Yeah. Like you could turn it off, but I think I think in to my personal preferences, if I can't see that you've seen a message and or are replying to it, I think that I I would prefer to move on to a client that can. I don't use the stock messaging app. Stop uh, stock text messaging app for anything. I use Facebook Messenger for pretty much everything. Which is so funny because you used to be not be a big proponent of it. I remember having this conversation before. Where yeah, you were I, like, didn't, I didn't oh, like it. Oh, you use data. I like, didn't like it. No, it wasn't the data. It's the battery usage. It yeah. uses battery like crazy, dude. Um, but I will I, I will make that concession for my battery life. Uh, to improve to, your personal life. To have my per- – yeah, to, <laughs> to, to, to get these red receipts and make my text messaging experience better. Okay, what's number two? Oh, uh, messaging clients which limit text input are vastly inferior to ones that don't. Limit Why are we still text. in this age? If I open my standard stock Android messaging client right now. Is this now, all just about Android text? <laughs> no, no. Um, but I start typing a message. Let me see. I have to get to the point where it starts limiting me. It's usually around 160 characters. 160 characters? Yeah, and, and after you what reach 160, limit. yeah, see, look, it's counting down now. 
So it starts at 10 and starts counting down. And then it splits my message up into two messages. Oh. Right? Okay. It's 145 on this client. And it'll split your message up. However, if you use emoji, the emoji takes up. So so here's an, here, here's, here's a, I'm at 135 characters, guys. Right? I add an emoji to it. And I now have 49 characters left out of my third message. So adding one emoji turned my message, uh, decreased my message size. By like 145 characters. Right, right. And the reason for it is because it it leaves the, it leaves SMS, I think, and turns into something else. Uh, No, I'm sorry. It leaves MMS. No, SMS and turns into MMS is the reason. Uh. Simple messaging and multimedia messaging. Uh. Um, So that's the reason for it. But why would I do that when I can go on to Facebook Messenger and not have to worry about my message being split up between three different messages. Right, because like because the easiest path to a to a, any location is a straight line. Why would we why do we have that fucking S curve around to right. get this stuff sent anymore? And not What's to mention like whenever you send things in multiple messages, half the time they'll get split up. Mm. They they will they will be um they will be in the wrong order. You'll receive them, you know, maybe message two, then one, then three. Yeah, because the it's one not that all loads the, time. the fastest gets there the fastest. Right. And if it happens to be that the first one has an emoji and the second one doesn't, then sometimes it goes second first instead of one, two. Right. So it's, it's, you know, and it's not all the time. I'm sure more often than not they send in the correct order. But, you know, whenever you send things in, in you know, many, many messages – you know, like, my ex-girlfriend, she used to send, like, really, really long messages. And if you're listening, I didn't care. Like, just for the record. That wasn't, that wasn't me, like, that wasn't me complaining about it on air. But she used to send really long messages. Like, seven of them, right? Seven really long me- Like, seven long no, 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 no. Long one long once? message that, s- that split into seven parts. Oh, no, that's terrible. And But the problem is, is I would always, always get them in the wrong order. So I have to sit there and piece together the end of one message and the beginning of another. And really, really piece it together. It was annoying. It's just not good software. Yeah. And 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 I was messaging on someone on Instagram. Um. By the way, who uses Instagram for messaging? So maybe this point is moot. But, <laughs> um. But after like I don't know, two hundred words or something like that, I was unable to keep sending. Right. I had to split up my message. It just blocked me after a certain number of characters. I don't know how many characters it was. Now Facebook will do the same thing. But the the character limit for Facebook is vastly I think larger. It's like in the thousands. Yeah, right? the character limit for Facebook is huge. So it's not that it's it's not a big deal. I'm not I've sending books paragraphs on, yeah. of, on stuff on Facebook. Yeah, before. yeah. It's it's not a huge paragraph li- or a huge text limit. Um, I'd like to know what it is, but I am too lazy to look it up. So yeah, so so I guess it's more of like you know that limit text input. That, that have strict limits on text input, I guess, is a better way to say it. Yeah, because there has think, to be some limit. Yeah, there has to be a limit no matter what your messaging client is. But yeah. if I can't send a decently long paragraph, just one paragraph of, you know, 150 words in one text message without it getting split up, I just don't think your messaging client is as solid as it could be. Yeah, absolutely. All right, what's three? Three is websites which websites which do not automatically open a number pad in a field which will only allow for number entries are inferior to ones which do. Oh. Um. So so here's an idea. You're filling out. Uh, you're on. You're you're buying something from Amazon, on your mobile phone, right? This is specifically for a mobile phone. Oh, and I you see. click onto the credit card number field, and it opens up an entire keyboard for a field that you could literally only type numbers in. <laughs> and you get an entire keyboard opened up. I don't know if that's how Amazon is. That's as lazy as I. Right. There, there. I know there are ways to do it, to open it up in like a T9 style, like, you yeah, know, yeah, where yeah. you get, not, not T9 style, but, the, you know, those old school, you know, like a, like a landline phone would be now. But kids listening might not know what that is. So, mm. but like where you get three rows, where it's one, two, three in one row, four, five, six, six in the next, seven, eight, nine in the next. And zero. then, yeah. And then pound zero or stars, stars uh, zero, zero pound. pound. Yeah. And and I know it's possible because some websites will do it, mm-hmm. but then some won't. Mm-hmm. And it's really annoying because that means I have to either go and manually switch or I have to type on little tiny keys just for numbers and I have to worry about being that much more precise. Sure, it's a nitpicky thing, but I think that it just shows, you know, perhaps a laziness or perhaps, 
you know, a uh, 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 incompetency. It's faster to call the same process to open the keyboard from the ori- from like the original thing for like search engines, so they can use the same right process right. instead of making the one that calls the num. So they just yeah copy-paste. yeah, and it just it perhaps just shows an incompetency. Um, but the purpose of a smartphone and the purpose of all these things is to make certain processes in your life easier. So whenever you make me have to either switch it myself or you make me have to type in these little tiny numbers or type on these little tiny numbers, it's just annoying. It's annoying. Stop it. Stop it. Milk. Yeah. Guess it. <laughs> <laughs> so number four is website logon services that have an optional show password button are superior to ones that don't. Yes. I hate I, We are in an age where where this is such an easy thing to do, you know? And you know what the biggest problem, the biggest, biggest company that does this that I use so frequently that that is specifically targeted toward? Mm. Go ahead and guess. Google. <laughs> the, one we, the one that we've talked about so often on are the show. Are you sure? Positive. Gmail specifically. If you go to log in on Gmail, at least every time I go to log in, there is no show password option. No little eye that you can click on. No little box that you can check. Nothing. PlayStation and Xbox menus have this option whenever you're signing into PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live. Why does Google <laughs> not have this option? You know? Yeah, you would think Google would understand web design more than Sony. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. But nope. Like, and I'm talking about through the PlayStation itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know, man. It's it's slower input, but I feel like PlayStation input's more accurate because it is slower, you know? Mm. So, like, you could literally do, like, one action at a time instead of a keyboard where you can do multiple. Yeah. So, I feel like on the PlayStation, it's probably not even necessary. You're probably right. Compared to a keyboard where you can accidentally hit a key on your way to another key. So, I don't know. It's It's really, really really weird that google specifically but many other companies don't do this i feel like it's an easy thing to implement because you're already knowing what characters i put in there Mm -hmm. because you have to check to make sure it's the password here's one for you yeah here's one for you um subscription services is not a software thing subscription services that allow you to use a free trial without inputting a credit card number are automatically better than ones that don't. This is true. Because, fuck off. You think I don't know what you're doing? Do yeah. you think that you fooled me? Because I know you're going to charge me on I'll the I'll go 31st. remove my credit card immediately after creating my account. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I Legit. Mm-hmm. And they'll still honor the free trial. Mm-hmm. But the, you know what it is, is for the people who don't. Because they don't think and about it. And you are scamming people. Mm-hmm. That is a really stupid thing to do. And I know, I know the whole thing is like, well, yeah, but people will sign up with another email and you know, get a free trial and then drop that and sign up with another email and get another month free trial. Well then do some IP checks Yeah. or something. Yeah. There are things you can do on your side, but you're offering that free trial for a reason. And then, they, Well, then they would say, Oh, you use a VPN. You can use a proxy. Well, but, yeah, but you know, I mean, that's always going to be around. There's not, yeah. there's almost nothing you can do about that. Yeah. So either stop offering the free trial or understand why you're offering the free trial and understand that if people want to pay for this service, they will. And if they don't, they'll get around it. Yeah. Like that is the, that is how human beings are. If they don't want to do something, they will get around it. Yeah. Let One me, way or another. Let me tell you something about pirated games. I don't own any. Wink. <laughs> But it's so easy to get a hold of, 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 you know, pirated copies of just about anything, man. Pirates Bay dot, whatever the new dot is. I mean, yeah. it's been like so many different things at this point. Like, and then it's search and they've got little tickers for video game, movie, TV show. Yeah, yeah. Like, and then rock and roll. And we're not endorsing it for the record. We're just, we're just letting people know, like, this is an easy thing. So why are, why are people caring about, I don't know. If if people want to if people want to get your service for free, they're gonna get it for free somehow. I wonder why. I wonder why people don't like put ads on Pirate Bay. Like actual companies don't put ads on Pirate Bay. I feel like Pirates Bay blocks them. I feel like that's the only reason. Well, there's I've seen ads on Pirates Bay. They're just oh. they're just garbage ads. They're things oh. like click here, sexy ladies, your area. Oh, you know? yeah. So I wonder why it isn't that like legit companies don't put ads on. They Pirates They probably just Bay. don't want to be associated with it. But see, here's the thing about that is uh, all right. First of all, I'm sorry. 
I have never thought that a pre the ad pre rolling before something or even being on the same page meant that you endorsed. The oh thing. yeah, That's yeah, it. me neither. I, I think don't it think... means that they endorse you. I don't think I don't think anyone thought that that was the case well, until the stuff, um, you mean? yeah until people started uh until people started to uh freaking pretend like it meant something. Yeah, That's what I was trying to say. Um, I don't want to get too much into this because we actually had a big long conversation with this yeah. over on the Procrastinach channel. Um, link to that will be in the description. Um, and I'll probably show notes. Whoa, it'll be in the show notes. Yeah, link to that will be in the <laughs> show notes, guys. That was good, Trey. Thanks. Thank you. I'm good at this um, podcast. And I probably put a little blurb at the beginning of the video because we forgot and we meant to mention it at the very beginning. So I'll probably put a blurb up there. So this is probably the second time you're hearing about it. But go check that out. It's about a two hour long podcast. Yeah. Um, and it's with some really great people. So yeah. go check them Everybody's... out and go check out their actual work. Um, and it, also, this is a good time to end the episode. Uh-huh. Go check out the rap beef that's going on. Oh yeah. Yeah. So go. You'll have to. you You'll have to go listen to the procrastinators to catch up. Um, but if you heard the uh the if you saw the rap song that we released on this channel. Yeah. Uh, that was aimed at them. That was that was for that. So you can uh you can go check that out, man. That was aimed at Bowman and Ernie, the hosts of the the Procrastinots, and also a buddy of theirs by the name of Squid, who's an independent rapper down here. So yeah. check all that out, man. Yep. Um, show them some love. Show them some support. Yeah. And show tell us them some love to, and support because we like that. Tell them to diss us back. I keep trying to get everybody to diss me back. Nobody's doing it. Yeah, Come they're on. too scared of us. They're scared. Oh, let me tell you something, buddy. I'm just so ready to be the one that does the next one. I can't tell you how excited I am about it. So I, I hope I nobody. I hope nobody even mentions you. Oh, well, I'll still come in anyway. Yeah, I'll, that's I'll, I'll poke my nose in your business. Okay. All right, guys. Well, thanks for listening. Uh, let us know what you thought. Uh, Give us a like and subscribe if you found it interesting because we're trying to come back strong, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, and if we don't see any support on this, this is the last you'll hear about us. <laughs> so <laughs> We're actually being held hostage by the Sasquatch. <laughs> he, he wants our feet. <laughs> so, yeah, let us know what you thought. Um, and we love you guys. If you ever if you ever encounter a, a, a Sasquatch in the woods, uh, and he sees you walking around in your headphones, and he pulls one on the side, and he goes, "Hey man, what are you doing?" You go, "Hey, bug off, Sasquatch! It's just a podcast." <laughs>